All right, back again. Lovely Sean is here. Thank God. <laughs> Get rid of extra. <laughs> yeah, I'm not coming in between you and extra beef. Don't use me as a pawn. <laughs> My name is not. <laughs> All right, so we're here. I mean, Champions League. The group stages. The group stages were were done today. And very interesting groups. Very exciting groups. Um, we have a lot to look for this Champions League. Let's look back at them. I mean, we already have a clear group of death. And that's Group C, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, PSG, Napoli, Liverpool, and and uh, sorry, and Belgrade, RS Belgrade. I mean, not a, a quote-unquote name brand team, but still I'm sure it's a formidable opponent, opponent, but definitely the competition will be between PSG, Napoli and Liverpool. And both, uh, not both, all three of them are very attacking teams with attacking players, attack-minded coaches, and they will just go at it and you can expect a lot of entertaining football in that group. I spoke to a Manchester United supporter today and his thing was, Manu got the group of death and he was like first of all stop looking at excuses already for when yes. they lose because Juventus, Man United, Valencia and Young Boys are in that group. Yeah. Um it's a pretty competitive group, but I wouldn't exactly say it's a group of death. It does though um set up an interesting encounter between Juventus, of course, with Cristiano Ronaldo and his former club, yeah. Manchester United. You were saying you wanted him to us <laughs> celebrate Go and celebrate and stuff for them. But you know, I, I'm sure you respect the, the fans and Absolutely. you owe them a lot. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a very good matchup between Juventus and Manchester United. Pogba, you know, going back home somewhat to, to, to Juventus. So, interesting storyline there. Um, we already know, I have a, a, a friend here who from Manchester United, Terry, just spoke to him off camera. And he is already predicting that they'll come third and go to the Europa League because I guess because they're still scarred from the severe you know beating from last year so they're very aware of the Spanish team mm -hmm. who are not really necessarily afraid to come to a Old Trafford and play attacking football against them mm -hmm. so I mean a club of Manchester United stature should come at least second in this that group that is exactly what I said at least. Um, but, but Juventus, Valencia is they, they're gonna have a little run for their money especially yeah. if nothing changes in the club and right yeah if, if nothing changes it wouldn't surprise me if Manu goes to, let's say, Belgrade away from home and, and draws 1-1 or loses 1-1 yeah, and yeah. goes to Valencia away and loses, you know, so at tough matchups. Um, let's just quickly look on Group B, Barcelona, Tottenham, PSV and Inter Milan. I think that's also another group of them. Yeah. Um, very tough, very storied clubs here, especially Inter Milan, you know, back in this competition and, you know, they, ha they made a lot of transfers this year. They put, they're, they're definitely trying to improve and make a splash this year. So, I expect them to do better than what a lot of people might expect. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we're going to get from Tottenham, Barcelona. You know, yeah. that PSG yeah. has some good young players. So, so. Uh, so, yeah, that's the Champions League group draw. Um, comment below, tell us what you think about the groups, who you think will go through this year. Would it be Real Madrid without Cristiano Ronaldo? Would it be Juventus with Cristiano Ronaldo? We want to hear from you guys, so just make sure to leave your comments and get the conversation started. Another thing that happened uh, at the Champions League draw were the UEFA awards. Yeah. Um, Real Madrid taking home pretty much everything. The Madrid awards. The Madrid awards. <laughs> but we quickly just want to touch on Luka Modric. He got the UEFA player of the year. And um, Brandon here was saying he's heard persons saying um, maybe Christie should have won, maybe Salah should have won. But um, I think it's, I, it could have gone either way. Yeah, Christy, I understand. Modric, same yeah, club. I understand. Christy did a lot for the club, yeah. you know. He performed superbly as he always does, but so did Modric. It's yeah. just that. 
Christy as a forward will get that kind of recognition. Most of the praise and but recognition. But the engine was really Luka Modric. Yeah. So um, congratulations to him. That's his first big award. Um, yeah. I mean, everybody, I think all football fans love Modric. So it's mm-hmm. hard to kind of argue against him winning because you want to see somebody like him get the recognition especially as a, a central midfielder and as you rightly said a lot of times the forwards take all the headlines right. when really the engine of the team was really the midfielder the but I, I do understand you know a lot of people think i hate cristiano ronaldo that is true but i am fair i am fair he probably should have won this year but you know i, I honestly i really think a lot of these judges or whoever votes for these things Sometimes I get tired of the typical yeah. names. They're just like, oh, Messi's been winning this four or five years in a row. Let's just keep Christy. And I know the Christy fanboys will be, they'll be okay with Modric winning as long as it's not Messi. So they'll be okay with it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, also, so, keep of the year was Navas. Defender of the year was, was Ramos. Ramos. And forward of the year was Christy. Christy. And Team the- of the year, <laughs> Real Madrid. Real Madrid. And Julian, not to give you a lot of editing, but on that video we saw where um, when Ramos won, <laughs> Salah was seated right in front of Ramos. Oh, and when he, when he when he came down from the stage, he tapped Salah on the shoulder. I basically to say, you know, like, Salah never really feels so good about Salah, I would not feel so good about it. I still have up Sergio Ramos for what he did in that Champions League final to Mo Salah. So I would feel good about that. That was a funny moment. That was a funny moment. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, kudos to, to Madrid and all the players that, that won. It was Madrid's year last year. Real Madrid sure. overall. Yeah. Um, but I, so going back to like what we said earlier about Manchester United and just the struggles that they've been having so far. Yeah. I mean, some some of it has been overplayed and overhyped by the media and fans coming. It's just a couple of games in, but we've seen kind of the writings on the wall throughout the summer. Yeah, Marina you know. complaining, yeah. and preseason he, was bad. Yeah. Like his whole attitude, his approach has just been really um, disheartening. And if yeah. I were a player, that obviously would trickle down to me. Like his bad energy, his bad vibe would obviously like exactly. It's not inspiring, no form of confidence, and you can see in the team like. They, they're not quite sure how to, to play and it, they seem almost timid and fearful of making mistakes. Because he has also criticized these players terribly in public. Yes. So now you're going out there to play for somebody who has nothing good to say about you. Obviously that's not going to motivate me at Exactly. All. And these players, face it, they're all multi-millionaires. After a while, I mean, that's, that's easily why I can say why well, Marino doesn't last very long at any one club. After a while, it, it gets on your back. But now his problem is not only with the players. There's some problem with the, Yeah, that's, that's the talk of the town the now. Club. He um, and he, Woodward. He's, yeah, and he's pretty upset that he didn't get money to get that um, world-class defender that he needed so yeah. badly. And going back to the players, as a defender, my boss is complaining that he didn't get money to get somebody to take my job. Exactly. Like, that's not a good vibe, that's not a good feeling, that's very uninspiring. And I just think Manchester United's problem right now is Jose Mourinho. Yeah, I he, think he, he, has has become, he has become a cancer. And I think we said this some episodes ago, he has become like a cancer in not only the dressing room, just the club. Um, all the attention is on him 24-7 and it's not good attention, you know, and people like Woodward can say, you know, you're complaining that you didn't get this player, but the last couple of years we've given you the money to They've splash the cash, a lot of you've money. bought players that you directly asked for and some of them have just amounted to nothing, so what are you really complaining about? But aside from that though, um, a lot of fans have complained that Mourinho has failed to change with the tides, but though he lost yeah. to um, um, Brighton yeah. on Monday, no, to Tottenham on Monday, Tottenham on Monday. he Brighton did Florida. make several changes, which yeah. is a positive in a sense, because he kind of stepped out of his comfort zone, did something different. 
he came with three new defenders, which was a total mess. Smalling and Jones. <laughs> which was a total mess. But you can see that he is probably looking for ideas. He's, uh, yeah, so I agree with that point for sure. He's definitely searching for ideas, but I mean... The wrong place? Yeah, like you, 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 you rewind to Brighton, the first two games, you have Lindelof and, and Bailey starting. You know, Mark here, yeah, they make some mistakes, but then I don't think the right thing to do is to drop both of them in the next game. But once again, you're talking about players who, you know, they play better when they have confidence, when they feel like the manager has confidence. In them. Yeah. So if you're going to drop them and make wholesale Bar changes, Ozil, these are different. Yeah. Carry on. If you're if you're going to make wholesale changes, whenever a player makes mistakes, mistakes. then they're going to approach it like, okay, you know, timid and I don't he want to no do the wrong thing. In me. Yeah, because you know when you make a mistake, you're going to get pulled. Yeah. But it's manual. I'm enjoying it at the moment. And There's been talk that Zidane may be replacing yeah. Mourinho. Uh, I, I, I really want to know what the Manchester United fans think feel about, or, think that. about that. I mean, so we know his exploits in Champions League, but we've never seen him come into a situation where he doesn't have all like top class players, almost like this ready made team. And it's now for him to just guide them. Now he's coming into a situation where he'd have to buy and develop players and you know kind of rebuild the whole system and all the play. So I would I would love to see him come in at some point. Um, not now, because I want Marina to continue to, to have his influence on the team, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I mean I have never wanted Burnley to win a game so <laughs> no, bad, yes. you know, and that's uh, Manchester United's next um, yeah. opponent. But, and it's, um, I think it's away to at Burnley, which is a tough place to go to turf more, so yeah. I think, I hope they'll have some troubles in the next game. You have a Manchester United fan behind the camera. So if this part is edited out, oh, yeah, we know why. <laughs> 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 We need to probably record this ourselves just so it, <laughs> it gets out there. But all the Manchester United fans, comment, let us know what you think. And even if you're not a Manchester United fan, um, would Zidane be a good fit at Old Trafford should Mourinho last out this season? What's happening at your club? How do you feel about all the drama from Mourinho to Woodward to the players? Pogba can't comment because he's afraid he's going to get fined. <laughs> it's just a whole lot of drama at Manchester yeah. United right now. And at a time when I think they should be... Uh, reclaiming their yeah. dominance and reclaiming premiership wins it just seems as if Manchester United is exactly. going down it's, more it, like it seems like a long time ago but they just came second in the premiership like it's, it's almost like how did they reach to this point you know coming second as you said they should be really but even on so their like, last premiership was in 2012 yeah at Manchester United to 2012 and 2017 mm. that's that's a long time for a club like Manchester United so something is definitely not working out there at yeah. all I think there, there is blame definitely to go around not just with Mourinho but also with the, the, the bigger heads because clearly Moyes was just not the right person right out of Fergie and then it felt like okay mm -hmm. Moyes not working let's just get the biggest name available which was LVG at the time and then I felt like they did that again the biggest name available and Zidane might be that again the Another biggest big name, name available so. not really looking at who would fit the job that we need to carry on this rebuilding process but my new friends let us know what you think it's early season we will see True. what happens next time, yeah. come next year will Manchester United be lifting the Premier League or will they be battling out in Europa League we'll yeah, the Arsenal, Europe, Man U, Europa League, okay. Arsenal is <laughs> going to make it to the top four. No, I mean this year, because we're in Europa League this year. Oh. Okay, <laughs> you know, they can come third in the group and get dropped to the Europa League, so. Yeah, yeah I want to play Alright guys, so thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Like, share, comment. Thanks for all the support so far. We got this
Miss you, X doll. <laughs>